Bell from the North Country Angler. And in this video today, we're going to be talking about streamer flies. Now, if you're from anywhere in New England, the first thing that's going to come to mind when you say streamer fly is probably gray ghost. If not gray ghost, a Mickey fin. The traditional feather wing flies and the bucktails have always been our go-to flies for big fish here in the East. However, in the last few years, these flies are starting to fall out of favor. Uh, at one time in our shop, we probably had a hundred different patents of different streamers, and today we're down to just 20 streamer fly patents in our shop. Um, while we're you know, losing our, our love for these flies, out west is kind of a renaissance. There's a revival of these flies. However, they bear no resemblance to our traditional streamer flies. They're bigger, they're uglier, and usually they are articulated. In other words, they have a joint and they have a lot of movement. Kelly Gallup has been kind of leading the charge in these flies. Uh, he owns the Madison Inn. He owns, the, we'll leave it that way. He owns the Slide Inn on the Madison River. Uh, but he did a lot of his early work, or early experimentation with these flies on the Osebo River in Michigan. Um, he has found uh, that these flies work best when cast right to the bank and with a sinking line and a very, very fast retrieve. And he has the big fish and the pictures of the big fish to prove it. So today we're going to be tying some of his favorite patents. We're going to be tying, oddly enough, a fly called the, the uh, Sex Dungeon. And we're going to be tying another fly, one of my favorites, that's worked very, very well here in our home waters, the Saco River, as well as the Androscoggin River. And this is called the Zoo Cougar. So what we're going to be doing, we're going to be, we're going to be talking and showing you how to put these articulated bodies together. The first fly that we're going to experiment with is called the sex dungeon. And it's articulated by using either some, some wire, and I've been using toothy critter from Climax. This works pretty well. There's other wires that are on the market that you can buy for it, but you can usually find these things in most fly shops and easier than trying to track down the, uh, the so-called perfect wire that's sold for them. The other item that works pretty well is to use uh, heavy hard butt, mason hard butt mono. Uh, this works pretty well too. This is 30 pound mono and this can be used too. It's pretty much the same idea as tying a, a Yankee uh, trolling fly, a tandem trolling fly, using different, uh, different materials to hook the two. Uh, sections of the two hooks together. Uh, I've already gone ahead and tied the rear of this fly, which is what you'd want to do first. Uh, you'd want to make the tie the back hook first, and this is pretty simple. It's just some marabou here on the back. Uh, I've used the marabou. I've wrapped, twisted it, and wrapped it it forward to form the body, and then we've uh, palmed a hackle through here uh, to give it some action, and then we've put some rubber legs on it. Now, that's pretty simple, so I'm, most people would understand that right away. Uh, so we're going to tie the front portion of the fly, and I've already put um, some eyes on here. Uh, these are a, a light, they're a plastic eye. You can also you tie this fly and tie it with lead eyes, and you can see in here that I've got uh, a pair of dumbbell lead eyes in here. So you could use those too. Uh, it depends on what type of action you want out of the fly. All right, so we've already got the eyes on there, and I'm going to wrap my thread right down to the bend. And when I get down to the bend here, I'm going to tie in my piece of wire. And I've got kind of an exaggerated length here. You really don't need that much. I'm just going to lay it on top there, catch it, tie it right in. And I'm using 3 aught monocord thread here, and you want a, a heavy thread, you could use some of the A threads. Rod wrapping thread might be work, because in the end here, we're going to spin some deer here, too. All right, I've got this on here. Most all of these flies use beads in order to separate the two hooks. And these beads right here are from... You've probably seen them in fly shops. They're killer bees, killer caddis bees. You could go to any craft shop and find beads that are going to work. You don't really need to have, uh, you know, anything specifically made for fly tying. We're going to string those beads on there. I got three beads, and then 
and we're going to take the rear portion, this, the tandem part of it, string that through there, and then catch the beads and go right back through that and bring that up tight. And if you got a material clip, you can probably hook that your fly, the rear fly, right in there. Got it about where I wanted. And we're going to start wrapping that in. Okay, I got that caught. And I want some extra security here, so I'm going to turn this over and double it up. Wrap that in. take the scissors or a small pair of pliers, cut that extra wire out of there. And then we're going to cover this with wraps. You can bring it all the way forward if you want. You can get a couple of extra X wraps through your eyes, bring it up, get that out of your way. And for now, all you want to do is you want to leave it so you can tie that off. Clip that out of there. Want to make sure your eyes are nice and straight. And then you want to use a product called Zappa Gap. This is just a CA glue, a super glue. You could use super glues, but Zappa Gap works really well. You can find it in most fly shops, and you can find it in hobby shops everywhere. And you want to make sure you put a drop in here by the eyes to make sure the eyes are good and secure. And then just a few drops along where you wrap that in. Make sure you get it on both sides. I always keep a toothpick or two on the bench. Clean up a little bit. Get that in there nice and smooth. Now it takes a little while for this to dry. Not a not tremendous amount of time, but enough that it would cause us to sit here and watch glue dry. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that out of the vise and we're going to set it over here in the foam. And I have another one that's already prepared that I put in a little while ago. And this is all ready to, to work with. So we'll put that in the vise, get it nice and secure. Okay. Well, all you want to do is start your thread again. Start back here. And we're going to use a little bit of glitter for the front portion of the body. And we're going to tie that in. Okay, we're going to leave that for a second. And then we're going to tie in a hackle. You can just pull that back a little bit, tie that right in by the tip. And you can reach in there and trim that out. Bring your thread forward. behind here. You got to be careful not to hook yourself, that's for sure. Yeah, we just wrap that right in. A couple of turns there. You 
want this to be pretty wild, so we don't really care too much how this gets wrapped in. We're not looking for anything fancy. Get that in. That out. Trim it up a little bit if you got some scragglers there. Make sure it's all nice and secure. If you want, you're a little worried about that coming undone. You can tie a whip finish in there just to hold it. Yeah, we're going to put in some rubber legs, some round rubber legs, colors, whatever, they're your choice. We get a hold of about four of them here. Cut that out and drop one off. And get, get those connected on that side. Come over here. Oops, got one tangled up there. There we go. Get these on this side. There. And we got a bunch of rubber legs here. You can tie that right down. And you could put a drop a zappa gap again if you want something to hold that, but uh, I think that's pretty secure. We're going to go ahead and we're going to spin a deer here. Uh, collar on here. thread out of there. Now if you watch some of the videos from the Western tires, they always take a double edge razor blade and they cut that so quick with a razor blade. You know, if I did that, I'd cut my fingers off. So I'm kind of do it the old fashioned way. Tip it over and I just use the scissors. And you want kind of like a muddler head. You want to make sure you don't cut off all your rubber legs and everything that you work so hard to put in there. But I just get that trimmed real quick with those scissors. Again, you want to make sure <laughs> it's embarrassing if you cut the little legs off, so you got to be careful. Turn it over this way. Looks now kind of like a punk rocker here. But the only concession I make, these are uh, serrated scissors and they, they do uh, grip the deer hair a little better and make it easier to cut. And we're not looking for perfection here. We want it to be kind of rough. There you go. Get some of the loose hairs off here. And there's a sex articulated sex dungeon. <laughs> 